ago but look at you today hallelujah you're in God's house hallelujah giving him praise hallelujah let's stand to our feet hallelujah as we give thanks on this morning for all that God has done hallelujah your hands oh god we know you're able oh god and we know you're able father we come before you right now with our hands outstretched God, we need a touch from you. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we're touching and we're reaching out right now in the name of Jesus. God, if you don't help us, we won't be helped. If you don't save us, oh, God, we won't be saved. God, if you don't heal, we won't be healed on this morning. We're going to touch you as you pass through the temple on this morning. We lay aside every weight and every care. We lay aside every burden and we say, Lord, have your way on this morning. 
Oh God, we need your glory. Oh God, we need your glory in this earth, oh God. We need your glory in our homes. We need your glory in our schools, oh God. We need your glory at 4450 Argent Court. Because where your glory is, there is liberty. Where your glory is, there's deliverance. Where your glory is, there's salvation. Where your glory is, there's joy. Where your glory is, there's peace. Where your glory is, there's salvation. Where your glory is, you are the lifter of our head. Where your glory is, oh God, we can stand for the liberty wherewith you set us free. So God, we thank you for your glory on this morning. Fill our hearts, oh God, with your strength and with your might. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for the soul that's going to be saved. We thank you for the soul that's going to be delivered. We thank you for the one that's going to cry out. We thank you for the mind that's going to be regulated. We thank you for the heart that's going to be healed. In the mighty name of Jesus. We are your children, and you are our father. And like a good father, you're going to provide. So we thank you for coming to our rescue in the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe the Lord, put your hands together and give God some praise. He knows what you have need of even before you ask. If you know that the Lord can and he will, give God the glory. If you know he's coming to your rescue. We thank you. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you. And we decree and declare that this will not be a service like any other. But we anticipate and we expect the move of God right now in the name of Jesus. Our scripture reading will be coming from Isaiah 54 which is God's prophetic word to his children. Ha ta ma ha. Hey, glory. Oh, yes, God. Hallelujah. It's his prophetic word to his church. And it reads at verse 11, O thou afflicted, tossed with tempest, and not comforted, behold, I will lay the stones with fair colors and lay the foundation with sapphire. I will make thy windows of a gates and thy gates of carbuncles and all thy borders of pleasant stones and all thy children shall be taught of the Lord and great shall be the peace of thy children in righteousness thou shalt be established thy shalt be far from oppression for thou shalt not fear and from terror for it shall not come near thee. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Behold, I have created the smith and the bloweth, the coals in the fire that bringeth forth an instrument for his works. And I have created the waster to destroy. Verse 17, and no weapon that is formed against thee. Look at somebody and say, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that rise up against thee, I am a For this is the inheritance, thank God, of the dim, of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise God for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Let everything that have arisen praise the Lord, the weapon. tell you why you're still here. Let me tell you why you should be praising God. Because the weapon was formed, but it didn't have permission to take you out. Ha! I'll say it again. The weapon was formed, but it didn't have permission to take you out. That's why you should be dancing right now. Because no weapon formed against me 
shall be able to prosper. I may have felt the impact, but I didn't feel the blow. Give God. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. 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 I will, 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 I
is not yours, but it belongs to God. Hallelujah. 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 Anybody blessed on this morning? Oh, yes. Is anybody blessed on this morning? Oh, yes. Hallelujah. 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 The, the song says the Lord is blessing me right now. Hallelujah. Come on, put those hands together.
He is our Omega. He is our beginning. He is our ending. And we worship him for he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Let's 
Father, in the name of the Lord, we thank you for being so wonderful and so good to each and every one of us. I say to each and every one of you that I've assembled yourselves in the building to, say, to tell you that the Lord has been good to us. That's why we worship him the way we do. To those of you that are watching via live stream and Facebook, we say to you, praise the Lord and greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is our privilege to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ into your homes, amen, to your cars and to your vehicles. It is our assignment to let you know that he's still alive and that he's still with you. It's our assignment to open up our mouths and glorify the goodness of the Lord. Is there a praiser in the house? Is there a person in the building that knows that the Lord is Back to Father, the name of the Lord, we thank Him for His goodness, His mercy, and for the great blessings that have come upon us. God has been good to us, hasn't He? Amen. We, 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 we We made it one more week. It meant no stray bullet hit us. No car accident. Praise still on our lips. Worship still in our hearts. I dare you to get up and give me your best friend. Before you're seated, just reach out, touch two people and say he's a good one.
He kept me and he kept my family. And you want me to sit still and act like he ain't worthy of the play? The devil is a liar. presence of the Lord is here. We can feel it in the atmosphere. In the presence. More things are wrought by prayer than the world has ever dreamed. Turn with me, if you can, to the book of John. The book of John, Gospel of St. John, chapter 21, and we will read verses 24 to 25. I'm going to be on a new series, and it's going to take me a while to get through it, but we want you to know that we are rapidly approaching Pentecost, which is May 28th, amen, which is Pentecost in the in the apostolic world. It is 10 days after Jesus ascended into heaven and he sent back his gift. We will be going on our Pentecostal fast starting on the May 19th and for the 10 days we will be having one meal a day. And I want you to know that I'm going to be calling special prayer services throughout that 10 day period and those of you that are not afraid to come and pray with me in the sanctuary, I'm looking for you to come and pray with me in the sanctuary that, that the enemy's hands will be broken, that your family will be set free, that your finances will be loose, and that the breakthrough of God that is coming in your life will come and rest upon you. Looking forward to you doing that and being a part of that. Amen, and we are expecting great things from the Lord. Reading to your hearing the Gospel of St. John, chapter 21, beginning at verses 24 and 25. It reads on this wise to your hearing, This is the disciple which testifieth of these things and wrote these things, and we know that his testimony is true. And there are also many other things Jesus did, that which if we, he, they should be written, everyone, I suppose, that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. And he ends it with amen. Before you're seated, just look at two or three people and say, he's still working miracles. still working mirror give me a few moments of your time on this evening 
and you don't be in a rush to leave out when I'm finished in the name of the Lord. And there are also many other things that Jesus did, which they were written one by one, I suppose, uh, that even the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. Amen. Another translation writes it. And I just take a few moments and just kind of digress and just kind of look. I'm a big fan of the NBA. I'm a big fan of the NBA TV specifically. It gives me the opportunity to review all of the highs and lows of the basketball game by showing me a highlight reel, allowing me to watch the most significant plays that have prompted the outcome of each game. And what it says is that when I turn it on, I don't have to watch all of the game to see a fantastic dunk by LeBron James. I don't have to watch the whole game to see Amen Kyrie Irving do the move with the ball. I can just simply turn on to it and it will give me snippets of what is going on in the basketball game. Maybe it's some of you that don't like basketball as much and you're football junkies. The same thing happens. You will see a snippet or a reel of what is going on at this time. Here it is. It is understandable that the Apostle Paul, Apostle John, excuse me, has given us a highlight reel of Jesus Christ in this book. He gives us a snippet of all of the great miracles that he worked. He did not include all of the things that he saw Jesus do. Amen. He did not do that, but he included the most significant things as we need to be fulfilling his evangelistical purpose. He shows us wonderful things that he's done. He shows us how he does it. And we're going to deal with those. And you understand the purpose has been driven in John chapter 20, verse 31. It says, but these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. There's power in the name of Jesus. Oh, I wish I had somebody that had it. <laughs> I wish I had somebody in here that don't mind screaming out the name Jesus. <laughs> I wish I had somebody that don't mind saying it two more times because their walls will be broken. <laughs> At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Here we are. We understand that through his name there is salvation. Amen. I, I've seen many people in my 50 plus years of ministry, I've seen people crying out hallelujah, which is the highest praise. But then there was something about those individuals that were on the tarrying or on the altar tarrying for the Holy Ghost when they started calling Jesus. Amen. They called until their tongue got heavy. Amen. They called until their tongue changed around. Amen. That name of Jesus. My God. I'm feeling something right about now. I just need one more believer. Wait a minute, don't you? I just want one more believer that is in need of a miracle right now to call him by his name. Yeah. Amen. This is a powerful message. And we begin to look at the book of John and we will be dealing with it for the next couple of Sundays leading up to Pentecost. And we want you to be able to read it for your homework for the rest of the month. Amen. Take out the whole book and read it chapter by chapter, verse by verse. And as we come to the end of the Gospel of John, the Apostle John concludes with an afterthought of his, this book. And he affirms the truthfulness of the Gospel. He confirms it. He affirms it. He begins to remind us that this is the truth. He writes this. He says, this is the disciple who testifies of the things and wrote these things. And we know that his testimony is true. Amen. The author of the gospel is none other than the disciple who loved Jesus. And you can find that in John chapter 21 and 20. The phrase, these things, refers to the entire gospel. John is testifying that what he wrote is true. I'm putting a stamp on it. I am putting my blood seal on it that everything that I am saying is the truth. And he says that all we read in the gospel of John is based on eyewitness accounts. 
Amen. It is John that is walking with him. He's sharing with him and talking with him. It's him. You know the story that when he rises up from the grave, amen, and then the sepulchral door was pushed back. It is Mary Magdalene that runs to where the disciples were and tells them what's going on. But it was John who was young that outruns Peter. Amen. And he stops in the doorway to look what's going on. He did not see him anymore. And it's amazing that even after Jesus had been arrived or he rose from the dead, excuse me, they found him in a position where they had never been before. He sees that God is at work. Amen. But still fear comes on them. But there was something that would happen a few days later. Amen. They would all be in a room, a tiny, small room with 120 other individuals. And the power and the anointing of Jesus, of God, comes upon them and sits upon each of them. And they all begin to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gives utterance. Here it is. We know John is testifying that he wrote that he's writing these words, amen, from an eyewitness account. Some believe that the phrase we know that he is testifying is true, his witness by someone other than John, that the scholars who view this say that we are the elders of the Ephesian church where John was traditionally served in his later life. They were talking about we. They were trying to make it somebody else that was going, I want you to know something, that people are trying to steal your testimony. Amen. They don't want to tell the testimony about what you used to be. Amen. They want to minimize what God has done in your life. Amen. They don't want to tell it. They want to make it like it's a group thing. But I've come to tell you, somebody in here got a real testimony about what they saw God do. Is there anyone in here that he brought out of sin and shame? Is there anyone in here that he had to reach way down to pick you up? Is there anyone in here that had to tell God, I'm laying down my bottle, amen, I'm laying down my reefer, my marijuana, my cocaine, and I'm following after you? If there is somebody in this house that knows that there's a God and they got a testimony about where God has brought them from, just reach out and tell them, I got a testimony. I got a testimony. I got, I got to testify. You don't know where I came from. Amen. I'm not perfect, but I'm still here. Amen. Here it is. He finds himself in a position where he has never been in before. Amen. They are testifying of all of the things that God has done. Amen. As we read to the end of the gospel, we understand he's concluding all of these thoughts and ideas. He writes of the testimonies. Of, amen. The author of the gospel is none other than John. And we've talked about this in the period. And amen. We understand that before we look at the last verse and we can understand that the accountability and I'm just trying to move quickly so that you can do it. Amen. But we will be dealing with the whole book in just a few days. Here it is. We understand before we look at the last verse of the incredible book, let's glance at the prelude and we understand of the gospel, the beginning component of the gospel. Amen. In John chapter one, verses one through 18, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Amen. John began the gospel with the word. Ah, God, that when he begins to write it, it's the word that means something. And, and you know what? I'm amazed by it. So often we try to make it about everything else, but it's the word that stands. The Bible says that before one jot or tittle of the word of God shall fail, that heaven and earth shall pass away. When Jesus comes out of the uh, out of the mountain and he had been there for 40 days, now, he had been suffering. It was the enemy that comes against them. He does not battle them. Amen. With a whole bunch of other stuff. He does not quote Kurt Franklin. He does not quote Rance Allen. He does not quote Le 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 Leandria Johnson. He does not quote all of those noted singers. But he uses the word to do battle. I want you to scream out a text. I want you to scream out something from the word of God that you have to use against the enemy. I say to him, for the enemy, I want to let you know, for I reckon that the suffering of this very present time 
name is not worthy to be with the compared with the glory which shall be revealed in me. I'm telling the devil that you can't stop what God has already started. Amen. I'm using the word. I am in the power of God. You got to use the word. Amen. I don't care who you are, what you are. It's not about you. It's about the word. Amen. The word makes a difference in our lives. Here it is. Amen. Who is God? He begins to tell us. He uses the word. And who is God? He informs us of all things were made through him. Amen. He talks about it in John 1 and 3. He talks about it in Genesis 1 and 1. He talks about it in Galatians 1 and 16. He talks about it in Hebrews 1 and 12. The person of Jesus Christ cannot be contained in this world, cannot be contained in this world because it is greater than God. It's great. It's greater. Amen. The personality is God. He's the one. Amen. And he is independent of the creation. It is not just him. He has already spoken it into existence. And you're saying, we you talking over my head. It is him that calls the earth back from darkness. It is him that says, let the firmament be in the sky. It's him that separates night from day. It's him that gives the flowers the ability to bloom. It's him that speaks to the mountains and the waters and tell it to run the way that it does. It's him that says to the phoenix and Philip, he says to the Atlantic Ocean, come this far and stop. Amen. It's him that says to the Pacific Ocean, don't you go any further. It's God that spoke the word I made life today. I've come to give you a word from God this morning. He is still speaking. He's still speaking. Amen. He's independent. But John also wants us to know that the word became flesh. John 1 and 14. Amen. Jesus humbled himself by becoming a human. Amen. Being without ceasing to be God. Amen. John 1 and 1 and 4 through 14. Philippians 2 verses 6 and 8. Amen. Here it is. This is why John refers to Jesus as the only begotten son. He begins to tell us in John 1 and 18, the phrase only begotten son does not mean that Jesus had the beginning like a baby. It does not say that he had to go through all of the things that we went through because he was not created as I was created. Ah, Jesus was not a product, amen, of Benjamin and the Vern. It was not a product of him. Amen. He was a product of the word. Amen. The word was spoken and he became, he is not only that. It does not mean that he came. He was birthed by parents, as we see it at many false religions teach. Jesus appeared to his disciples several times, I mean, between the in resurrection and the ascension of heaven. Amen. This is something that you have to understand, and we will take our time in the next couple of weeks to break it down. One of the appearances, amen, was on the shores of Tiberias or the Galilean Sea. Amen. We understand that the opening verses of the Gospel of John 21 Peter, amen, decides to go fishing and several of the other disciples who were with them accompany him. And these fishers grew. This fishing crew found themselves that they were out all night, amen, but they caught nothing. The reason why this is important, amen, because Jesus had already died. He had already went to the cross of Calvary. He had already suffered. He had already bled for us. Amen. And here they are. Amen. They did not even recognize who he was. Amen. These men, these seasoned fishermen, these men that found themselves making a living to support their families on a regular basis. Amen. Had been out fishing all night long. Amen. And couldn't come up with anything. Amen. I want to push pause in my life, there was a man by the name of Bishop Darby. Amen. I had been running a revival service in his church and then I had been running one in Sorrento, Florida that I was ministering. Amen. And that night before I was to fly home, amen, he took me fishing. Amen. He had a little rowboat. Amen. A little 
oboe. That wasn't big. It probably, amen, was from the piano to where I am. And we were sitting in it. We were casting our lines. He was lowering it in the water. And as he was lowering it in the water, we began to fish. Before we began to fish, here comes a beautiful yacht that was near us. Amen. I'm looking up at the yacht and the guy on the yacht was looking down on me. Amen. I was comfortable. I had my fishing rod. Amen. It was in the middle of the night. Amen. And the man that was on the yacht looked at us. Amen. And told us, you going fishing in that? And I said, yes, sir, I'm going fishing in this. And I never forgot it. The man said, I saw a crocodile. Amen. That was bigger than that boat. Amen. I want you to know, I said, hold it. Amen. I put my hands in the boat. Amen. I like crocodiles, but I like them on my feet. Amen. Here it is. I found out that there was a fish that was bigger than the boat. Amen. So my prayers were that no matter where I am, that the God I serve will protect me and cover me. I speak it to you that you are protected. Here you are. They have gone fishing. They're out there in the water. They've been running around. Amen amen, fishing all night long and they caught nothing, amen, but when dawn came, I want you to understand there is a struggle that happens in the midnight hour, there's a difficult time in which most of us are wrestling with, we've been praying, we've been crying out, amen, even on this morning, I went to sleep earlier, amen, but about one o'clock, I woke up out of my sleep, amen, and found myself praying, amen, that God would heal as only he can. And while I was praying, something got a hold of me. Amen. I want you to know that it's between the hours of midnight and dawn. Amen. That the imps and the demons of the world are busy trying to cause us to backslide. Amen. Trying to stop the folk from giving God glory. But I know that there's a prayer warrior in the house. I know that there's somebody that's been crying out to God and say, Lord, I need your mercy. It's something about the wee hours of the morning that while I was praying, I heard all kinds of noises. It sounded like somebody was knocking at my door. And I said, that's a distraction. And I kept on praying. I kept on crying out to God. I kept on saying, Lord, heal. Somebody needs a miracle. Somebody needs a breakthrough. Somebody needs the deliverance. I kept on crying now until God heard my cry. He told me to pray for diabetes. Amen. Pray for heart murmurs. He told me to pray for anointing. I stopped there and kept on praying. I said, God, anoint your house. Let your power fall. Every force that's in here that's trying to stop it let your anointing come down let your power walk through the aisles and while you're walking through the aisles remember that you were wounded for our transgression you were bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon you and by your stripes Lord you healed Lord heal God heal the minds of the saints heal the bodies of the saints Heal their finances, God. I kept on praying because I wanted a miracle. I needed somebody to leave this place with a mind made up that I'm going to serve him. I'm going to worship him. I'm going to glorify him. I'm going to praise him. No matter how rough the storm, no matter how difficult it is, no matter how much they don't like me, I'm going to stand firm standing on the rock of my salvation. I need somebody in here that the enemy is trying to shake you and trying to cause you to quit and to tell them I won't go back. I'm not going back to the hell place. I'm not going back to the demon board. I'm not going to this place, but I'm going to stand fast on the anointing of God.
God. Amen, God. I feel it in my spirit. There's a miracle coming. There's a breakthrough coming. Somebody's about to be delivered. Some chains are about to be broken. I feel it in my spirit. Somebody ought to praise him before your victory. You're one praise away from it. You're one praise away from deliverance. You're one praise away from victory. Open up your mouth and glorify the Lord. I need a praiser. Oh, God. Huh. You know what I just thought about? When I stop, you stop. When I stop, you stop. But if you were in real need, <laughs> Give me a few more minutes and I'm getting out of here. Listen, when we understand that it opens, we see that Peter did not, he took these other men fishing and they went there, they didn't catch anything. While they returned at dawn, Jesus, whom they did not immediately recognize, says to them, Children, have you caught anything to eat? That's what Jesus says. Have you caught anything to eat? When they answered no, he tells them to try again. The time casting the net over. This time taking the net and throwing it over on the other side. Now the fishermen knew a specific side in which to throw their net over. But Jesus tells them to go against their, their basic instinct and to throw it on the other side. Amen. They throw it over on the right side of the boat and they found something or they find something. They obeyed and not only did they catch a great number of fish, but they catch more than their nets could hold. More than their nets could hold. They obeyed God, and that seems to be the problem now. We don't want to obey God. We'd rather obey man than God. Oh, God. Oh, y'all don't know what y'all started here. Man, here it is. They not only did they find this, they obey God. Not only did they catch a great number of fish. But they caught more than their nets could hold. We have our own role and ministry to follow. Everybody in here, that's why I've been taking my time talking about your assignment. Now, and I want you to understand it and make it very clear. I'm not talking about women preaching and pastoring. Yeah, that. Oh, don't put that on me. I didn't say that. But there is a call that God has for you. That you're going to pray some folks out of stuff. You're going to cover God in the anointing. You're going to pray people through. You're going to teach them the word of God and how to live holy. Oh, I'm, I'm preaching to somebody here. As the body of Christ, we are to work separately together. Did, did you hear me? That, did, did I say something? You are to work separately but together, amen, I, amen, I, I, I'm, I'm blessed. I got two legs, I got two knees, two feet, I got ten toes, five fingers, ten fingers, excuse me. Amen, I'm, I, I got everything. But the whole body sometimes does not operate the way it's supposed to operate at times. Amen, amen. I'm, oh, I'm just talking about it. As the body of Christ, we are to work together yet separately because there is some stuff that God has specifically called you to do, amen, that's going to build the kingdom of God. Am I right about it? 
but that does not mean that you cannot come together and work together amen just as the human body does amen the eyes the left hand the right hand amen i did not realize how important my left hand was to me until i got into the car accident i did not believe it and i did not realize how dependent i am on my left hand amen I, even though i write with my right hand i do everything else with my left and it did not come to knowledge i was driving my car and i tried to pull it and I had to use my other hand because it didn't have strength enough in it. You have to understand that when we are in the body of Christ, there are parts of us that have another assignment but we are still operating together. Oh, we have different gifts. Amen. That's what the word of some of us have the gift of love. Amen. We can love everybody no matter how crazy you are. We have the gift of love. Amen. We have the gift of tongues. We have all of the gifts that are in operation. And I want you to understand the gifts are in operation in the house, but you are keeping it to yourself because you don't want nobody else to covet what you're having. And I want you to know they cannot covet it if it's not for them to have. With these different gifts and talents, Amen. We are called into different ways to fulfill God's will and plan for the, for the kingdom. We have an assignment. Some of you are just singers extraordinaire and others, okay. It's to tell you that there's a gifting that God has given you. When you get the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues, amen, you have a taste of what God can do. You're so excited. Maybe, 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 let me see the hands of you that have a real, have had a real Holy Ghost experience. You mean all of y'all have, and I'm not talking about just a few steps. I'm talking about a tongue speaking. I got apostolic way, get on you and fall all over you. My son said, my son told, told somebody, amen, that the, he was shouting, he shouted out his shoes, Gene. Amen. And he started to give praise God. And they said to him, Hey, it's a, you shouted out your shoes. You know what his response was? Well, get on you, it gets on you. When it gets on you, you know what I'm talking about? We got some folk that are running, jump over, walk cords. When it gets on you, Look at somebody and say, when it gets on you, it gets on you. Patoboshia. <laughs> when it gets on you, you can't change it. Then you, there's no way in the world it can get on you and you can have an attitude with somebody. I've been waiting for a long time for Pastor Reed to break out. I've been Bishop Bonner's assistant pastor in New York, been his assistant pastor here in Columbia, South Carolina, been an evangelist for him that ran across the country, but I knew that there was a calling in my life, and now it's here. He is here now. I'm not going to talk about blessing this and blessing that. In order to get a blessing, you got to get on your knees and get it like the Bible said. Get the Holy Ghost. Using this passage as a spiritual guide shows us that even though we can do nothing without him, we can work wonders through us if we cooperate with him. We can't do nothing without him, but we have to understand that we got to be used as vessels under God. Amen. I'm going to tell you, God is a great God. Oh, I've seen him work miracles in science. I, amen. I told you the story. If I haven't told it to you, I, I told you the story about myself as a young preacher. Amen. Going to the hospital wards. Amen. I was trying to do all that was required. I did not wait. I went to go and pray and hey, pray for the sick and shut and read the words of God. Amen. I went to uh, Calvary Hospital Hampton's up in the Bronx. Amen. And they called it the last place before the graveyard. Amen. And I went in that in the place. I went into that facility. I had my Bible. I had my scripture ready. Had my suit on. I looked real clergy. 
Is that how you say it? Amen. I looked real like a clergy member. I went into the room. Amen. I saw this individual laying there on the bed. Amen. I began to minister to him because they were saved. I began to minister to him and I began to pray. Loose him. Loose him. And I want you to know that sometimes when you are praying those things, you have to be prepared for the enemy to actually be loose. It is not just words that we're going through, but we are claiming that the Lord would bring about deliverance. Amen. Amen. But what you must remember that when you speak that into their lives, he's got to go somewhere. Amen. He's going. And Jesus talks about that when he sees Satan coming into the kingdom when he called the sons of God together. He said, where are you coming from? So he says, I'm coming from going to and fro, seeking whom I may divide. The imps are trying to destroy you. The imps are trying to cause wilderness to come into your life. Amen. And I'm just talking about me as I was praying as a young man and I was lifting up my hand I began to walk out the door after I had come to the conclusion and as I got to the door sweat began to pop off of me amen it began to pour I felt as sick as I had never been in my life I want you to know that if I did not have the power of God to bind up that demon it would have overtaken me I've come to let you know stop playing church amen stop playing like you got so much anointed because that same demon amen is waiting for a way to trap you and not go block off but i need a real warrior up in here that don't say i'm standing on the promises I'm just telling you, God spared us, amen, from 2020 to 2023, amen. I don't know about you, but I've never got COVID, amen. I never got a sign of it. I'm not minimizing anybody else that has gone through it because I hear that it is horrible. It is probably one of the most difficult things for anybody to go through, amen. But I have covered the Lord covered me and he's kept me. You know why? So that now I can preach the gospel. Amen. I'm not just preaching about a blessing or a breakthrough. You got to live right. You got to act right. You got to be right. The devil is a liar. I'm tired of these saints. Amen. Trying to act holy. Amen. On Sunday. But acting like the devil Monday through Friday. And you saying you save. You are crucified him afresh. I've come to give you a word like I've never given it before. Stand on the promises of God and let him know that he is a keeper. I've come to let you know he's about to do something for you if you just hold firm to his gospel. Hold firm. Hold firm. He wants you to take it back. He wants you to say, I just go to church so I can say I've been there. But I'm not going for this stuff. This is not my final resting place. I'm not just going to be here. But when the trump of God shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then we which remain, that we're still in the Holy Ghost, still in the anointed, still in the power, still living right, we shall be caught up together Look at somebody and say, we're going to get out of here. When the time is right, we're going to get out of here. I made up my mind that I won't go back. I made up my mind I'm not going to go to hell through the church either. Made up my mind. But 
does not mean that the enemy doesn't talk to me just like he talks to you. Got this stuff. I'm telling you that I see it as never before. We are in a perfect position to grow like we've never grown before. We are in a position of reset. We are in a position of purging. That if it's not in God's will, I've asked God to move it out the way. And don't you dare think that for one moment, I have excluded myself from it. I said, search me, Lord. Search me, Lord. If you find anything that shouldn't be, take it out and strengthen me. I want to be right. I want to be whole. I want to be saved. Somebody ought to say amen. We've been wrestling with the wrong stuff. You got to remember that when everybody that comes in the door is not of God. They got their own mindset, their own decision-making process that is against what God is trying to do. But you have to understand that God is getting ready to move. Okay, just, just, just give me, let me. What, what happens was, what happened is that these men, they went fishing, they went fishing, they went fishing. Amen. We understand that Jesus, amen, is in this passage. He's addressing the entire group as well as the whole, both in his greeting and his instruction. A few verses later, Jesus asked Peter three times if he loves him. Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Now, you got to remember, Peter is the one that's messed up. He has went hiding. How, how do you know so much about You don't know my story. You, you, you're looking at what I've done the last 10 years, the last 15 years since I've been here in Columbia, but you don't know my story. You don't know how I suffered because of hard-headedness. You don't know the struggles that I had to go through that God had to break me. He had to break me until I cried out, Lord, help me. Until I say, save me, wash me again. I had to be me, and I don't wish that on nobody. He put me in a place where I had to trust only him. Am I right about it, Him? broke me because I wouldn't listen to him. I wouldn't heed to his word. I wouldn't obey him. Brought up in the church, walked in the church, could sing. Before I came here, I could sing. I knew the words, am I right? I was the apostolic Teddy Pentagraph. Yeah. You don't know who he is. Y'all been saved all your life. Sing. Mm. Praying. And as I'm praying, I, I, here I am, I'm doing it. But the enemy had devices 
that was set that I wasn't even conscious of. And I allowed myself to walk into them and fall into them. Have you ever woke up in the pit and didn't realize how you got there? Have you walked in the pit and don't realize how you got there? I was in the pit. Oh, God. But it was in that pit.